Hi everybody, it's Jamie here, one of the product managers at Catex Systems. I'm just going to spend the next couple of minutes just talking about how to um, how to reliably get your SolidWorks models into Visualize. So as you remember, Visualize is a fairly new product for us, um, and it's been rebranded from Bunk Speed. So I just wanted to go through some of the um, some of the import options really. There's two ways of getting the SolidWorks data into Visualize. The first one is to import it directly, so using the Visualize software and the interface to actually import the data from there. And the second way is to export it from SolidWorks. So there's an add-in um, up in the um, up in the feature manager that allows you to export it uh, straight into Visualize, and it will open up Visualize as well. So first of all, let's just have a look at the uh, the ways that we can import it into Visualize. So it's all based on part grouping, which is basically a way of splitting the SolidWorks geometry into parts in Visualize based on the choice of either layers, appearances, and divisions in the model. So layers, really, that's specifically for Alias, actually, so it's not um, anything that we really need to get too worried about, um, but it's how uh, we can divide it based on appearances or divisions in the model, i.e. parts, uh, assemblies, faces, bodies, that kind of thing. So we're just going to use this as a quick example. Um, this is a, a, st a stapler that you can see the feature manager tree. So it's basically these components that go together to form that top level assembly, the stapler assembly there. Uh, and this is the uh, the appearances tab. So you can see that we've got different appearances for these particular parts. So you can see that we've got quite a few, you know, chromium plate ones, for example, um, for this particular item. So there's quite a few things in there that are chrome. And we've got a couple of things in there that are matte rubber as well. So that's how our um, how our appearances tab would look like and that's our feature manager tree so basically we want to know how that would appear in SOLIDWORKS visualize and depending on the options that we choose that's actually going to come across uh, quite differently so we're just going to have a look when you open up the software and it asks you to import the geometry um, we have to choose our part grouping and it's all dependent on what we choose here will actually um, bring it across in a slightly different way in SOLIDWORKS visualize so let's explore those so the first one is the automatic setting. Now this actually looks at the feature manager tree, so it breaks it into the divisions of the parts that are already in there, but also it, it splits it into the appearances that you've got associated with it. We would suggest, um, if you're able to, is actually applying your materials in SOLIDWORKS, um, and this automatic setting is the best way, it's the best combination really of, um, of bringing in your parts and all of your appearances that are set already. That's why we recommend it, so a big green tick for that one. The next one is flatten. Now this brings in um, it, your your parts, but it actually flattens the, any sub-assemblies that might be in there. This, this doesn't actually have any sub-assemblies, but if they were, it would flatten those, so you wouldn't have that division. But it also doesn't bring in any appearances that you've got either, so it would just bring in a very dull grey model, um, but it would have all the individual components in there that you can select and apply different appearances to. Um, this can be used for troubleshooting, actually, so that can be quite useful. We've then got group appearance. Now this is specifically for Autodesk alias design software, so we're not going to involve ourselves too much with this, um, as is anything with layer in it as well. So we can, in alias, we can basically have layers that help us to define geometry and there are different appearances. So um, the terms with layers and all the options with layers in are specifically really for alias. So we're not going to worry too much about that layer one either. We've then got this one, which is layer and appearance, which again is uh, an alias specific uh, import option. Then we've got appearance, so this allows us to um, basically paint really, really quickly. So it takes any of your um, any identical appearances and groups them in one. So, for example, of the uh, sharpener that I showed, you, sorry, the, the stapler that I showed you there, all of the chrome plates would then become one part, if you like. So we can really quickly change it to another material, for example. But it groups all of the identical appearances together but it's not linked in any way to the actual part tree. So your individual parts won't be there. Instead, it'll just show those that have got the same appearance as one particular part. Then we've got appearance uh, layer, which again is, a, is an alias one. And then finally, we've got this retained structure. Now this can be quite useful, but also fairly dangerous at the same time. Um, it brings in your um, hierarchy from your assembly, so all the parts and assemblies would be there, but then it splits all of the, the parts into individual faces uh, available for selection. So if you had a, a part with multiple faces, then each one of those would be um, a single entity that you'd have to change. Obviously, if you're painting um, something up, then it's that's not the best one to use. So we specifically um, suggest using the automatic one. That's certainly the best one for using with SolidWorks CAD data. 
Okay, what happens if you're uh, modeling stuff in SOLIDWORKS and we're using it in Visualize, but then unfortunately the SOLIDWORKS data gets revised? Well, this is really important. When you're importing your data, just make sure that you've got the option there, monitor file ticked. Now this just basically creates a link with the original CAD data so that if the CAD data changes, it will flag it up in Visualize and then you can just do a re-import, um, but it leaves all your settings the same. So that's best practice really if we're importing is to use the automatic selection with the monitor file option ticked as well. Some of the other import settings that we might want to look at, um, we've got the ability to snap geometry to the floor. Obviously, that's um, quite important. We've got tessellation settings that we can increase. Um, so basically, the, the, the slider bar there, the further we go over to the right, the higher quality the model will be. But obviously, we've got a larger file size to, to deal with there. We've got appearances tab that we can uh, bring in automatically the appearances from the model as I've suggested in some of those import options but we've also got the option there to ignore text references if we don't want to so if you want to start from a, a clean slate as it were um, then that's how we'd actually use it. This will bring in any animations or motion setting or motion uh, studies that you've got within SOLIDWORKS. Uh, this will bring in uh, the camera selection will basically allow you to bring in the last active camera from SOLIDWORKS. Um, so that's not all cameras, it's just the last active one. So if you've just saved your SOLIDWORKS model looking through the camera of a, of, you know, from a certain angle, then that will be brought in as your default view into Visualize. Likewise with environments. So that's the last active environment from SOLIDWORKS will then get transposed into SOLIDWORKS uh, Visualize. And then finally, we can bring in decals. Now, just a caveat here, the only decals that it can bring in and assign automatically are projection mapped decals. Um, it will also bring in um, uh, decals, but we, we do need to specify them uh, manually if they are label spherical or cylindrical uh, mapping used to, do, used to put those on. We'd need to reassociate those in the CAD model itself, in, in the uh, visualized model itself. So I said there's two ways, importing and exporting. Let's have a look at how we export out of SOLIDWORKS. First one is that we can use the, so as you can see, this is the, the add-in at the top here, and we've got the option on our SOLIDWORKS Visualize tab to do an export simple, which basically is the fastest way to paint. So as I said, it groups all of this identical appearances together um, and gives you in one. So you can see that this is the tree that you you looked with then. Instead of individual components, you've got just a grouped appearance there instead. Now just be aware of that because it doesn't monitor the original source model so if you do uh, think you're going to update CAD geometry then that's probably not the best option to use but certainly for a really quick and dirty render um, and the ability to change lots of appearances at the same time this is the one because it's going to group all of those together. This is the one that I particularly use, um, an export advance. It's the most flexible option. It basically uses the automatic mode. So as I said, that's the way that we import um, reliably is using automatic. So it uses that as a part grouping, but also it monitors the original source files. So that's really important. If we think we're going to update CAD geometry, then this is definitely the option to use because it's going to make sure that SOLIDWORKS visualizes on top of any changes that are made over in the CAD system. So best practice there, if we're using an export, then let's use the export advanced and it's going to stay linked to the original CAD geometry there. Okay, just a really quick video there, but hopefully that's going to get you guys uh, informed of, of the most reliable ways of bringing in your SOLIDWORKS data into SOLIDWORKS Visualize. If you've got any questions or feedback, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch, 01663 or email feedback at catech.com. Thanks for your time.